How are you doing this afternoon? Doing great, Dave. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. So uh, it's uh, a good day, I think, to talk about some investment and retirement planning basics. And we're going to talk about uh, Roth IRAs today. Yeah, love a good Roth IRA. These are uh, some pretty magical uh, financial tools that we have. Lots of different yes. uses for them. So, you know, I kind of yep. nerd out and get excited about this stuff. Yeah, um. yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I agree. I, I a lot of times describe Roth IRAs as the most generous thing Congress has ever done for us for right. retirement planning purposes. Yes, thank Along you, Mister. Thank you, Mr. Roth, Mr. right? <laughs> right, 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 right. Up there with HSAs, which we've already talked about. Right. So, um, yeah, Ed, we're, we're coming into tax season here. So this is timely because there's some things you can do before you file taxes for last year that pertain to Roths. Right. So for a uh, way to get started, uh, what is a Roth IRA? What is this thing? Yeah, so Roth IRA, a qualified retirement plan um, where you deposit funds that have already been taxed. So you don't get the tax deduction now, but the tax benefit comes in in the future when you take it out. As long as you make a qualifying distribution, which is typically after age 59 and a half, but there are a handful of rules and reasons why you can take it out before 59 and a half, those funds actually come out tax free. Um, so just that 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 right. process of growing the funds, paying the taxes now, growing the funds and taking them out on a tax free basis really opens up a lot of options from a financial planning standpoint and a lot right. of different ways to utilize these um, that can be beneficial for the long for your long term goals. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think it's easy maybe to frame what a Roth IRA is by comparing it to the two main other choices out there um, being a just regular investment account that has no special tax treatment. Right. And, and a traditional IRA. So if you have a, a regular investment account, you're going to get a 1099 every year that tells you how much tax, uh, how much interest and dividends income you have, how much capital gains you had, and you have to pay tax on that every year. And that takes away from your return, right? That you're saving for retirement. Right, exactly. So, so with a Roth, you don't have to pay taxes on an ongoing basis. And if you follow all the rules, the distributions are gonna be tax-free in retirement. And uh, another point of, comparison is to a traditional IRA where you actually deduct what you put into the account from your current taxes, but then when the money comes out of the IRA in retirement, you pay tax on that money. Yep. So so a Roth kind of gives you the best of both in that you aren't going to pay taxes on an ongoing basis and you aren't going to pay taxes when it comes out. Yeah, and that, you know, so uh, it's definitely one of those things that takes some planning and figuring out when we start comparing, okay, should I do a Roth IRA or traditional IRA or should I do a, you know, a regular investment account? There's reasons, good reasons to have um, all three of them in certain situations. So it, right. it does take a bit of planning and, and some thought behind, but you know, generally, if you can, if you have a long term investment goal and you can put it into something that will never be taxed again, uh, that's a, generally a pretty good thing. Particularly when you're um, younger and in a low income tax situation right now, uh, then uh, putting the money away, paying the tax on the money now and putting it away for, for the rest of your life tax free is usually a no brainer. And right. um yeah, it can be a it can be a pretty powerful tool in that sense. So, of for course, sure, and uh, being a powerful tool, that means that Congress, of course, and, and government isn't going to let everybody have it, and they're certainly not going to let you put as much money as you want into something that they're never going to be able to collect tax revenues on again. Right, right. So uh, there's income limits if you are a single taxpayer. And for the, and this is, we should preface this by saying we're going to talk about both 2020 and 2021 because one of the nice features of Roth IRAs and traditional IRAs is that you can actually make a previous year contribution up until when you pay your file your taxes for for that year. 
So here we are in March of 2021. You can still make a 2020 contribution if you're eligible up until you file your taxes, which for most of us is April 15th. Right. So uh, a planning opportunity of this year might be if you're going to get another stimulus check here, which hasn't been approved yet, but <laughs> is looking like there's something ahead of potentially yourself, yeah. coming <laughs> <laughs> that you could make a contribution for last year. And if you're curious as to whether or not you should spend or save your stimulus, we did a podcast on that as well if, if you didn't listen to that one. So um, lots of thought behind spending versus saving, but one great way to you know, potentially save some money on and, and contribute to an IRA would be if you came into a windfall like a stimulus or something sure. similar to that, especially this time of year, because you can double dip. You could do 2020 and 21 at one time. Yeah. So so the way it works. So, so Nick, just like uh, anything else where uh, Congress is going to give us um, tax benefits, there's also eligibility rules around who can qualify and who can't. And so to be eligible to make a Roth IRA contribution, um, to make a full Roth contribution, you, if you're a single filer in 2020, you have to make less than 124,000. And if you make more than that, but less than 139,000, you can make a partial Roth contribution. There's a formula. And if you make above 139,000, you just aren't allowed to do it. And if you're married and filing jointly, those limits are 196 and under for a full Roth contribution. And if you make more than a 200, more than $206,000, you're not qualified to make any Roth contribution. For 2021, just to confuse you with more numbers, those step up a little bit for inflation, $1,000 each for the single filers and 2,000 for the joint filers. So now you know why we use a cheat sheet because that is a lot of numbers. <laughs> it is. That's why we've so, got these flowcharts, right? That's right. So when you are looking at this stuff, be sure to check out the flowcharts. We'll post them in the show notes on the blog right. um, and you can download and take those with you. But just know that every year those numbers, of course, change by enough of a, a small of an amount that it's going to make it a headache. Yeah. But um, usually within that range with a small boost for inflation on a yearly basis. Yes. Yep. And so then the other thing that changes every year, and I always have to look at my cheat sheet, is how much is a full contribution? And for both 2020 and 2021, a full contribution is $6,000. But if you're over 50, you get to make a catch-up contribution of an extra $1,000. So right. $6,000 or $7,000, depending on your age. Yeah, so um, a, a pretty good chunk for a contribution standpoint, especially if you're able to max that out on a regular basis over a long period of time. You can, you know, put quite a bit of money away in there, and the the bigger benefit is the growth of it through compound interest and um, properly mm -hmm. investing it. Yeah, yeah, the difference of not having to pay taxes every year on on what the money earns can add up. Definitely. Yeah. So the next question or the next topic that we wanted to discover or discuss is um, Roth IRA. Is it a good idea? Uh, you know, how do I decide? Do I do a Roth IRA? Do I do a traditional IRA? Do I do neither of those if I am eligible? Um, so and we've got some basic fundamental thoughts behind that. But as always, it's kind of a situation by situation basis. And so there's a right. lot that goes into that, but certainly um, some starting points as far as whether or not it's a good idea for you to contribute. Yeah, yeah. So um, as a basic rule of thumb, if you're in a low tax bracket now and expect to be in a higher tax bracket or close to the same in retirement, a Roth is going to do you some good. Yeah. Pay those taxes now, get them out of the way and let the money grow tax free. If you're in a high income situation and a high marginal tax bracket right now, you may be better off taking the tax deduction from your income with the idea that you'll hopefully end up in a lower tax bracket in retirement. Yeah, so that's the the hard part of this is you got to do some projecting and thinking about a what is your income going to be when you start needing mm -hmm. this money, but b is the tax law going to be the same or is that <laughs> going to be different as well? So it, it does right. get a little bit complicated. 
Um, and it's certainly, and, and the, the funny thing about it is, is if you, you know, do the numbers and the math, there's virtually no difference if you're in the same tax bracket now and in retirement, if you're contributing the exact same amount and you get the same mm -hmm. rate of return. And so, um, you know, other things being equal, they're similar, but that's when the planning aspect comes in of what tax bracket you're going to be in, how much income you're going to have in retirement, how you're going to use those funds. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that we like to think about too is, you know, is that going to change? Most people's retirements are 20 or 30 years. And so mm -hmm. there's years when you're going to be in a lower tax bracket, years when you're going to be in a higher tax bracket and having what we would consider tax diversification and having multiple options makes a lot of sense as well. So we're right. not in the basket of, hey, you've got one choice. Everything should be, you should put everything in a Roth IRA and never pay taxes again because you're going to miss out on a lot of good potential benefits um, going the other way as well. Right. Yeah. You know, we talk about diversifying your assets. Well, diversifying the tax treatment of your assets is pretty handy too. So you're going to, most people have some tax deferred, you know, traditional IRA money from their employer plan or different sources. Um, having some regular after-tax money either in the bank or in an investment account is helpful too. But then having that Roth is kind of the third third pillar of uh, tax diversification. So I guess I'd put it this way. I've never had a client in their 70s say, darn it all, I wish I didn't have that. You know, I wish I had taken that Roth money and put it in my in my traditional IRA. Right. Uh, you know, there are, everybody's always glad to have some money they can grab without having to worry about the tax impact. And it just gives us another tool to work with. The other thing there is if you put all your money into a pre-tax traditional IRA or into pre-tax 401k, 403b type accounts, it can become a self-fulfilling prophecy that you end up in a higher tax bracket in retirement. You know, you build yeah. up these these huge pre-tax retirement accounts and then you turn around and need money out and everything you take out is taxed at, as income. And all of a sudden in retirement, you're in as high a tax bracket or higher than you were when you were working. And that's a common problem we see with um, clients that are in retirement now because for years their only option was pre-tax. Right. And and so now they've built up, they've done, they did a good job saving for retirement and the market certainly helped for most of their careers. And now they're kind of in a situation where they don't have a lot of options for tax. Yeah. And it really comes to a head when you hit age 72 and we got to start taking required minimum distributions and we have no control over how much or how little right. comes out of that account because we have a required minimum that can complicate things and, and cause some issues from a tax standpoint. Um, the benefit of the Roth IRA is there is no required minimum distribution. So there's a little bit of flexibility on that side as well. Right, right. So, you know, lots of factors. One thing I, we, you know, we've been talking about uh, individual retirement accounts traditional IRAs and Roth IRAs, but the same approach now is applicable with most 401k plans mm -hmm. that will have a traditional or pre-tax option and a Roth option. So you still have, you're still stuck with the overall limit, which is what 19,500, I believe in 2021 of yep. personal contributions, but you can choose, do you want a portion of that to go in and be deducted from your taxes now, or do you want it to go in after tax and be treated as Roth money at retirement? Once you're in retirement, all this stuff is treated the same, whether it's IRAs or 401ks. So, um, but the same philosophy about tax brackets, your current situation and where you think you'll be in retirement applies to, to both parts of that. Yeah, and just a, a quick cautionary note when you're looking at the 401k side, um, a lot of 401ks were also built with the capability to do an after-tax contribution that's not a designated Roth contribution, and that does not work the same way and can be a little bit more complicated. <laughs> so make sure you know right. when you're making those contributions, you know it's a Roth or a pre-tax and not a after-tax Right contribution because those become a little bit more complex um, and, and there's a little bit of accounting work and keeping track of that that you have to do on your side. Right, right. And there's there's also 
more sophisticated planning that can be done around those sort of those sort of plans too, as far as uh, um, making after tax contributions to 401k plans and then doing certain things with them to have them treated as Roth, but that's kind of beyond our scope right now. So, you know, we'll take yeah. that on a case by case basis. With that's clients. right. Uh, and there's a, <laughs> there's a, so there's a reason why those after tax um, contribution capabilities are there, but it's not as simple as after tax equals Roth. So that's right. our, our cautionary tone of the day. Right, right, right. That's a good, yeah. good point. Good point. So, um, you know, philosophically, I think they're a great tool. Again, I, I think it's it's particularly great when we get to retirement and we have all the different buckets filled as far as tax treatment. Um, the big thing, too, I would say is don't don't get if, if you're having to make decisions about this, don't get uh, paralyzed by doing the analysis, you know. Um, if yeah. you qualify for, and chances are, if you qualify for a Roth, you're not going to be sorry you do a Roth. Right. You know. Yeah. yeah when it comes to, you know, on the, on the younger side of things, I used to um, do some 401k plans and working with younger um, employees coming into the business. And what I would always tell them is who knows what the next 40 years mm -hmm. of your career is. So if you put money into the Roth portion and your company's doing pre-tax match, you're going to have both yeah. and you're going to have options. So it's probably a good yeah. default if nothing else. But, you know, as you get closer and, and as you're doing more of the planning, make sure you're paying attention to the what and the why behind it, because there's yeah. um, good good arguments on both sides and, and understanding what your taxes are and what your, you know, where you stand right now will really help you make that decision. Yes. So. Um... We'll uh, we'll post the flow charts with the uh, contribution limits, so you can you can follow along there. We'll, we can post both 2020 and 2021. Um, we also have a similar flow chart that kind of goes with those. That kind of walks you through what we were talking about with figure, you know, whether whether pre-tax or post-tax makes sense, whether Roth or traditional makes sense. So we can we can have all three of those on the. Uh, as links uh, from the article from this blog of this uh, podcast. So you can look for that on our blog. Yeah, absolutely. So do we want to talk real quick about, we've talked a lot about the mechanics behind it and why you're, why not, why or why you should not maybe do it, but do we want to talk a little bit about investments? Sure. Yeah. What goes inside? That's the fun stuff, right? <laughs> so, you know, I, I use the, the toolbox analogy with clients a lot that, you know, an IRA, a Roth IRA, they're, they're like a toolbox and the type of toolbox determines the tax treatment, but you can put all sorts of different tools inside the toolbox, right? And with the tools right. being the investments themselves. Um, my philosophy is for most people, the Roth IRA is probably gonna be some of the last money that you use. So sometimes we can be more aggressive. We can take a little more risk because we have a longer time frame inside the Roth. So, you know, that's one aspect of, you know, how to choose the investments. There's a flip side to that. And well, and, and I, we didn't talk much about the ways you can get money back out of a Roth if you need to, but one of the things you can do with the Roth is take your own contribution amount back out without any penalties or taxes before retirement. And so sometimes people will put money in a Roth thinking maybe I'm going to need that money in a couple of years. We don't encourage it. But in those kind of instances, you might want to be more conservative. Yeah, for sure. Or um, another one we see from time to time is college. So mm -hmm. if you have a yeah. kid going to college, you can yank money out for that. Again, not one of those that it's because of the limit on how much you can put in there. We really want to kind of protect and preserve those for long term if we can. But it's right. definitely an option for you at some point, too, if you're thinking about that. Right. If we're if we're starting from scratch with somebody who's got college goals and retirement college college goals for their children and retirement goals. We generally want to see those college goals treated as a separate in a separate account using 529 yeah. plans or something similar. But a Roth is another tool. And there are instances where I've seen good arguments for using a Roth as part of your college planning. So that would kind of drive that investment decision. Um, you know, if you're going to use stock investments or more stock investments, you know, investing in the stock market really is about time. 
Right. And so you want to have a long time frame to make that pay off. And uh, so you need to uh, you need to take that into account when you're designing what goes in your Roth. For sure. And the other thing that I would say along those lines as well that I've seen happen before is you don't have to worry about taxes whatsoever because of the way that this account is set up. And so when you're looking at investment options, and, I, and I've seen people do this before, where you're putting you know, maybe a, a tax-free bond fund in there, well, that doesn't really mm-hmm. do you any good because your yield is lower and you get no tax benefits from it. So right. um, just being aware that you know, from a tax standpoint, you can put in there whatever Whatever you want because it's going to be taxed the same way right yep that's a good point that's a good point so um you know lots to uh lots to chew on here with uh which always seems to be the case with these topics they seem simple but uh you know when you start drilling down into it there's lots of decisions to make so just don't get uh don't get too caught up in the um it's most important to get things done i guess that's what i'm trying to say yeah you're, yeah. you're way better off with not the perfect investment choice, but funding the uh, Roth IRA than you mm-hmm. are with not funding it because you don't know what investments to choose. So Right. And, you know, if you're doing this on your own um, through Vanguard or some source like that, you know, the, there's nothing wrong with the target date fund. And uh, we've got information on the on our blog about target date funds if uh, you need to check that out, too. Yeah, great point. All right. Well, I think we've... Uh, We've talked about Roths enough for one one afternoon. Yeah, I think we uh, we did a good job with that. We nerded out a little bit, but um, <laughs> you know that's that's what this podcast is for, and, and hopefully you've learned something. But it, as always, if you have questions about Roth IRAs or how it fits into your financial plan, feel free to reach out. Um, we'd love to uh, answer any questions that you might have. All right. Well, thanks a lot. I'll talk to you later, Nick. Yeah, sounds good, Dave. <laughs>